this is just a fancy way of saying y. Y'all know that it just tends to trip you up. F of x is a fancy way of saying y. Switch x and y and solve for y. Okay, that's what this boils down to. We're going to switch x and y and we're going to solve for y. And then it says the inverse of a linear function is also a function. So what we're just doing is the inverse function. In this case, the answer to that is always going to be yes. So let's actually find the inverse of the linear function f of x is equal to 1 fourth x minus 9. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out that f of x and I'm going to put a y. Because again, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. Now I need to switch my x and my y. So I've got x equals 1 over 4 y minus 9. Okay, these are just the steps for finding an inverse. Switch x and y. So x is equal to 1 over 4y minus 9. Then we're going to solve for y. So that means we're going to get y by itself. So we're always going to, let, let's write some steps over here. Okay, switch x and y. You're always going to add or subtract. First. So in this case, we've got a minus 9 on that side. We need to move it away from the y, so we're going to add it to both sides. So we have x plus 9 is equal to 1 over 4y. Then we multiply or divide. Okay, so um, y'all would probably say divide, right? Because it's one fourth times y. Now, that is not incorrect to say that you would divide by one fourth, but we just really do not like to divide by a fraction. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we are going to multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal means you flip it over. So if you flip over one fourth, you get four. Multiply both sides by four. It's just like we're solving an equation, we're just not going to get a number for an answer. We've got an equation as our final answer. Okay, one fourth times four is one. That's why this works. One fourth times four is one. We've got one y. That's why that works. Hello. I Okay, one fourth times four is one, so we've got one y over here. Okay, over here on this side, we need to multiply. We need to multiply out that four. Distribute the four. Four x plus thirty six, and that's equal to y. Well, we're trying to find the inverse, so really that's equal to our inverse. So we're going to replace the y with f inverse of x. Okay, so steps. Switch x and y. Solve for y. You always add or subtract first, then you multiply or divide. And then once you get y by itself, you replace y with the inverse notation. Now, here's how you can check whether you did it correctly. Okay, here's a special property about inverses. Okay, f and f inverse are reflections across y equals x. Okay, f and f inverse are reflections across y equals x, which means for reflections, mirror images, you all know that, um, y over x always goes through the intersection. of f and f inverse.
So I'm going to graph this so you can see all this stuff is that I'm talking about. F and F inverse are reflections across y equals x. That means y equals x always goes through the intersection of those two graphs, and there are mirror images across that line. I'll put this back up here in a second if you didn't get all that written down, but let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to graph the original, 1 fourth x minus 9. I'm going to graph my inverse. Okay, I'm going to get this out of the way because I can't see, oh, and I'm going to graph y equals x. I'm going to graph y equals x. Let me zoom out because all I see is one line right now. I was way zoomed in there. Okay, now I can see all three of my lines. Notice how the green, the green is the y equals x. It goes right through where those two lines cross. Okay, the purple one is the original. The black one is the inverse. So where they intersect, y equals x intersects there as well. Okay, and if you kind of turn your head to the side so that that green line is straight up and down, you should be able to see how they are mirroring each other on the left and the right side of that green line. Okay. So if the green line is straight up and down, when you turn your head, you should see the mirror across that line. Okay. Let me show you what it would look like if it if you didn't do it correctly. So say for example you didn't distribute four. What if you just had four x plus nine? Okay. When you graph it, where the two functions cross, notice y equals x is it going through that point where they intersect? And if I turn my head to the side, these are not reflecting across that line. Okay, because if they reflected, I should have an intersection over here. I don't. Okay, so it's it's just kind of a way for you to check and make sure that you did everything right. If y equals x goes through their intersection and the left side looks like the right side, chances are you did all your calculations correctly. Okay? questions about that. Well, let me show you a couple more examples with the fractions because I know it's kind of weird. Um, let's look at number eight. Flip your paper over. Let's look at number eight. Okay, we've got g of x is equal to negative 3 eighths x minus 1 over 16. So again, mark that g of x out, put a y, and now let's switch x and y. So x is equal to negative 3 over 8y minus 1 over 16. Okay, x is equal to negative 3 over 8y minus 1 over 16. Solving for y. So we add that 1 over 16 because we were originally subtracting it. So we do the opposite. Okay, so we've got x plus 1 over 16 is equal to negative 3 over 8y. Normally, y'all would say divide by negative 3 over 8. That's not wrong. It's just easier to deal with if we multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by negative 8 over 3. Again, let me show you why that works. We're trying to get y by itself. So if we have negative 3 over 8 and we multiply that by negative 8 over 3, the result is 1. So that means we have 1y on that left side, or that right side, and that's what we want. Okay, so those cancel. We want to distribute that. So I'm running out of room. I think I can fit it in right here. I'm going to go ahead and put my inverse notation because I do have y by itself right here. So I'm going to put g inverse of x is equal to negative 8 over 3x and negative 8 over 3 times 1 over 16. I don't want that decimal. I want the fraction. Negative 1 over 6. So that is my inverse. Negative 8 over 3x minus 1 over 6.